Debian 12, codenamed Bookworm, has been recently released. It took us a couple of weeks of testing in a virtual environment and on physical hardware. This is our verdict. Let's dive in. Debian is not what it used to be. Now, with version 12, the installation file includes the proprietary stuff needed for the system to run smoothly on your hardware. And if you don't like its complicated installer, then you can grab an ISO file with the very popular Calamari's installer. This is exactly what we did, and here's how it looks in the virtual box. The installer is intuitive and self-explanatory, even for brand new users, and all it takes is a couple of clicks for the installation to be ready. The installation process itself lasted around 7 minutes on the virtual machine, and it was with no issues at all. Right after the installation, a user is met with the fresh and clean Debian 12 bookworm. This new version offers a fresh and updated user experience. Debian was notorious for being an old and outdated operating system for the sake of stability, but it's not the case anymore. For instance, in Bookworm, the GNOME desktop environment is version 43.4, which is not the very latest one as of the time of recording the video, but nevertheless, it's almost the latest one, and it's not an old version either, as was the case in previous Debian versions. User-friendly job. Default applications are with the new Libadweta look, and are from the 43 series, as is the case here with Files Manager, for example. It's the typical GNOME 40-something desktop, with the Activities button triggering horizontal workspaces and an on-screen app launcher. Those two were vertical in the previous versions of GNOME. There are quite a few applications pre-installed, many of them are unnecessary in our view, but we will deal with that later on in the video. So, GNOME 43 also brings a newer version of the system menu in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, while the notifications, calendar and clocks area is in the middle, where it used to be. One of the newer apps is GNOME's software. Here it's version 43.4. It automatically offers system updates, and we will install those updates right away. The update process requires the system to be restarted, and we will follow it through. In a freshly installed Debian 12 system, what we find bloated is that there are like 20 games pre-installed. We usually set up the system for a working environment, so we will have to take care of it. Still, there are some outdated things in Debian 12. For example, the default web browser is Firefox ESR, where ESR stands for Extended Support Release. Here it's version 102.12, several versions late as of the time of recording the video. While there are some updates in Debian 12, there are also some areas where it still lags behind. But you can solve that issue and we will show you that later on in the video. The same thing is with the default Office Suite, which is LibreOffice. Here it's version 7.4.5.1, not the latest one, but very close to it right now. But remember, the goal of Debian is stability, 
not the latest and greatest stuff. Debian 12 has introduced another thing that is very friendly for average users. Now the extensions app is installed out of the box, and users don't have to jump through so many hoops to get it installed. The app helps you to customize and add elements to your system. This makes it easier for users to customize their system to their liking. Extensions are enabled by default, and many of them are already built in. A user can activate any of those should she or he wants it. Additionally, the Tweaks app is also pre-installed, and there you can customize several things, including adding the name of the day in the top bar, or adding minimize or maximize buttons, which Debian doesn't provide by default. You can also center new windows in the Tweaks app if you like, for instance. For the minimize and maximize buttons to make sense in the GNOME desktop environment, you need to install the Dash to Dock extension. This allows users to easily access the minimize and maximize functions in the GNOME desktop environment. Simply go to the GNOME extensions website and there enable the extensions installation via Firefox. Now restart your browser, just in case, and go to the website one more time. Search for the Dash to Dock extension and simply install it by sliding the on-screen button. Now, as you can see, you've got yourself a dock that constantly sits on the screen and enables you to maximize and minimize apps. The next thing is to head over to the Extensions app, and there you can adapt the dock application according to your needs. One of the things is enabling the Minimize on Click functionality, and it immediately works as it should. Debian 12 Bookworm also offers some options to customize the look and feel of the system. The Settings app has the Appearance tab where users can switch between light and dark themes, and there are also several default desktop backgrounds. This allows users to easily customize the appearance of their system. Let's change the default theme to the dark style, and we will also choose another wallpaper. Or, if you prefer some other picture, you can add it to the Settings app, and then click on it to make it your default wallpaper. Debian 12 Bookworm offers tens of thousands of applications in the official repository, so most probably they might have everything you need. For users that do not like newer app formats, such as snaps or flatpacks, the default Debian 12 setup, which offers apps from the official repositories, is an ideal solution. All the apps are in the native .deb format. Still, if you need updated applications and you like the Flatpak platform at the same time, it's very easy to set it up in Debian 12. The instructions can be found on Flatpak's official site. All you need to do is to click on Debian's logo and copy three lines of code into your terminal app. After the system is restarted, the software app now offers applications from the Flathub repository too. Now, for example, if you search for KDEN Live, a very popular video editor, you'll see that its Flatpak version 
is newer than the version from the Debian repositories. And that's the very way you can resolve the issues with Firefox and LibreOffice. You can simply install their Flatpak versions if you like, and you'll get the latest versions available. Now it's time to get rid of pre-installed games. You can either open the software app and there search for a game you wish to uninstall. And simply click a button to remove it from the system. This allows users to easily remove any pre-installed games they do not want. Or you can open an old-school software app Synaptic Package Manager, and there you can search for the game you are about to uninstall and do the job. Another thing we usually do in our systems is adding MS fonts to enable document sharing and collaboration. Users accustomed to Ubuntu, for example, might want to try and find the fonts via Synaptic Package Manager, but in Debian 12 you'll not find it. We solved the issue by searching for the TTF MS Core Fonts Installer package on the Internet, then downloaded it and then simply installed it via the software application. After that it was a routine job to find the new fonts and change the defaults in the LibreOffice Writer app. Everything worked well. So this is how it looks, our Debian 12 installed on the real hardware, on one of our mid-range production machines. This is after all the customizations and all the added apps. Debian 12 build replaced Ubuntu 22.04 on this machine, and it has settled quite well on the hardware. It works flawlessly and with no stuttering or any other issues. GNOME is kind of the default desktop environment in Debian, but certainly it's not the only one. Debian offers several more desktop environments, and besides GNOME, we have also tested its KDE edition. This provides users with a choice of desktop environments to suit their preferences. And Debian 12 offers the latest version of the KDE 5 desktop environment series. Debian KDE works smoothly and brings in a familiar, stable and professional-looking operating system. So, have you tried Debian 12 Bookworm? Do you think it's good enough to be your daily driver? Tell us in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching the video. Please share it, give us a like and subscribe to our channel. See you next time.